I think we all know that the crypto space right now is at one of the craziest spots it's ever been at. But what if I were to tell you that the reality of that might be even crazier than you could imagine? And where that comes from is mostly in the idea that us right now, as simple crypto holders, are facing an extremely interesting battle with these major institutions. And one thing that's happening in the background will most likely do your bags, do your holdings really, really well. Take a look at this. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF gains $500 million as Wall Street appetite for Bitcoin grows. Money keeps flowing into the new ETFs, and as a result, Bitcoin keeps on flying. And I mean, even Eric keeps on talking about just how unique this opportunity is. And interestingly enough, they also talk about some of the bad sides like Gary Gensler, the SEC and their approval. And I think we'll be covering that a little bit later as we dive into the probability of an Ethereum ETF. But for right now, take a look. New Year, same old Gary Gensler. But guess what? I don't really care. I feel nothing, not annoyed, not compelled in the least to analyze his words because the ETFs are out, baby, and doing a smashing job thus far. The ship has sailed, war is over, have a nice day. And that's because what was said by Gary Gensler and the entity was, quote, this is a field that's been rife with fraud and manipulation. Look at all the bankruptcies, says SEC Chair Gary Gensler on crypto. It's not just one entity, it's after entity after entity lining up in the bankruptcy court. And again, all this negativity for what? Anyway, to continue on, the numbers are just staggering. More unusual second wind strength on display from iBit, which has broken the weekly volume record. Again, record breaking again and again. And it's only Wednesday with average of 760 million a day. Top 1% numbers. And why I'm saying all this will make sense in just a second. Volume also good predictor of inflows for newborn ETFs, given there aren't many existing owners to sell. The reason this is interesting and unusual is because early on IBIT's volume was correlated with grayscale Bitcoin outflows and perhaps to any lined up cash that BlackRock, I think, had thought, uh, thought all that would wind or wind down a uh, bit in unison. And it started too, but then IBIT broke the frick loose choo choo and everything now comes together with this right here this is the bitcoin halving countdown it's a countdown until the bitcoin rewards per block mind half and that practically means that the amount of bitcoin coming into circulation will become a, a lot less obviously but you have to understand if the demand like we're seeing right now is crazy high yet the amount of Bitcoin coming in is only getting lower. What does that mean for the price? And take a look at this article right here. Bitcoin ETFs are sucking up 10 times, well, even more, Bitcoin than miners can produce. And the reason I'm getting so excited is because this number is relatively low to where it's going to be at over the next few months, most likely. Spot Bitcoin ETF inflows have outpaced the amount of production from miners by over 10 times in the past two trading days. Spot Bitcoin ETFs scooped up 10 times more Bitcoin than what miners were able to produce. According to preliminary figures, at least 500 million or roughly 10,000 Bitcoin flowed into spot Bitcoin ETFs as of February 12th. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin ETF saw the lion's share with a massive 374 million and some others were having some really, really juicy numbers as well. On the same day, though, Bitcoin miners produced only around 1,000 Bitcoin, roughly $51 million, according to blockchain.com, which is just about 10%, even less, of the amount of Bitcoin being hovered up by spot Bitcoin ETFs. And before that, it was also happening $550 million in, only $45 million worth of Bitcoin coming back in. Anthony Pompliano shared it recently as well. Wall Street loves Bitcoin. They're buying up 12.5 times more Bitcoin per day than the network can produce. The March to new all-time highs is underway. If this continues, I explained this on my segment in Squawk CNBC. Now, let's make one thing clear. Theoretically speaking, more Bitcoin coming in, even if that number were to be zero, and there'd be crazy inflows, the price could still go down. Why is that? Because if the outflows are greater than the inflows, then price go down. The thing is here though, that the price was 
let's call it relatively stable with new Bitcoin coming in all the time. It was on a slight upwards bias. But then now the amount of additional buying pressure for Bitcoin is most likely just moving that price up higher. And I am not a full on Bitcoin maxi. Many people I've talked to over time have put out the claim that Dusty, why do you talk about Bitcoin so much? And I, I keep reiterating by saying, if you're not sure what I'm doing here and why I keep bringing up Bitcoin, please consider that it is the biggest cryptocurrency out there. It is the standard for what crypto is to most people. And it moves out of Bitcoin into all coins, like the, the, the gains move out of Bitcoin into all the other assets. But it mostly goes to Bitcoin first. We've talked about how an altcoin season looks like. It's Bitcoin growing, getting all that momentum before moving up higher. And so that's the most important thing to analyze by far. And as we've been reading now, if there's a juicy supply shock for Bitcoin, that will reflect itself onto altcoins because that means these guys are going to notice prices go up and perhaps a lot of people get outpriced where they're not happy to participate at the moment. And so they look for various different opportunities. One could be to file or apply for more Ethereum ETFs or any other ETFs of that nature because they just want to get the next juicy opportunity early, which could still be months out. Obviously, the Ethereum ETF has got a couple months, like three months or so more time to go. Anyway, in lieu of the whole Bitcoin supply crunch coming in, I'm also buying a lot of things close to the Bitcoin ecosystem. For example, stacks. And one thing that I just saw that kind of broke my mind a little bit is that apparently the guys over at Tron are going to be going for a Bitcoin layer two. In interesting, you know, daring for sure. And part of the reason I think why a lot of people are still focusing on Bitcoin and its ecosystem rather than fully altcoins I think at least is because perhaps Ethereum and all these other ETFs, but let's just say mostly other ETFs because Ethereum, I think we'll get through. But what if these other ETFs do not get approved and there's no crypto basket ETF or anything of that sort for a little while that could basically lead a lot of these major investors to fully focus on Bitcoin and as the supply crunch comes in. Even though at the same time, I've been shouting it to you guys, institutions, they might be focused mostly on Bitcoin, perhaps a little bit of Ethereum, and thus the ecosystem is pretty juicy as again, supply crunch means they, they get a little bit nervous and that could do really well for the ecosystem. I do still believe as a baseline, massive amounts of money will come into the other altcoins that are really high up on the rankings. We've talked about it before, you go from Bitcoin to major altcoins to smaller and smaller altcoins. Right now we're in that Bitcoin uh, major altcoin stage, but because the market's moving in an interesting fashion with the ETFs now joining, I am skipping that major altcoin phase a bit more and going mostly just towards the small altcoins because I've already got a lot of major altcoins. The only thing is I'm not selling them yet. I'm just hoarding everything right now because I know if I look back at this in about 12 months from now or so, oh boy, oh boy, is our portfolio going to be juicy. So I'll be making another couple of videos very soon here, very very, very quickly here. I'll do a video on top BRC, top Bitcoin related type of projects I'm looking into and I'm excited about and especially explain more in depth as to why. I've done it here partially, but I'll explain it more there. Another top altcoin video in general coming up. And I keep looking at the comments for what type of video you'd like to see next. But every single time I post something, just write down below. And whatever I see the most, usually I get towards. And I notice right now, a lot of people want some info on the top Bitcoin type of stuff because I still think it's a pretty easy 100x. But hey, just my opinion. Make sure you press that like button if you enjoyed this video. And hopefully, I'll see you guys again in another crypto video somewhere later today.